to the crawl room. We're here once again in this wonderful ranty room for all things Formula One. And before I kick things off with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix rundown, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone that watched the Monaco Grand Prix crawl room. Unbelievably, 2,800 views in the space of 24 hours. Absolutely mental. I haven't had a video with that kind of response after uploading since the Malaysian Grand Prix back in 2017, the Cruel Wall back then. So, yeah, a massive, massive thank you. It was it was honestly unbelievable to see, and it's been a, a long, long time since I've had like a viral video in that short space of time. I've had videos that have been slow burners and gradually gaining views and gaining, gaining traction, but... Unbelievable stuff. Thank you so, so much. It, it made my week, that did. It really did. So, thank you to all those that are continuing to watch the channel that have subscribed from that video. And also a massive thank you to all my regular viewers for uh, your long and continued support. Because without you guys, that wouldn't have happened. So, thank you so, so much for that. So, if you've never seen this series before, I award the drivers out of a maximum of 10 points based on their race weekend's performance. And I go all the way down to zero if you have a particularly bad one. Look out for bonus points though, they're sometimes on offer to the drivers that do something extra special during a race, and I do award minus points to those drivers that do something extra special for all the wrong reasons. So let's take a look at the Cruel Room standings going into this race weekend then. It's on the screen now for you to take a look at. Have a look, see where your favourite driver is. Could you see him going up, could you see him going down this race weekend? It's been incredibly close so far, I'm really enjoying how close the championship is, and it's hotting up at the top isn't it? So... Can you expect any risers, any fallers? So we're going to kick things off with the race winner, Max Verstappen. Another Red Bull victory and another Red Bull 1-2 as well. Max Verstappen taking home the win from his teammate Sergio Perez. What could be said for Max's race? It it was really, really clinical driving by him, wasn't it, this weekend? Uh, qualifying wasn't the best third position. He was disappointed with that. Is it? He expected front row at minimum, but out-qualified by his teammate. Then in the race, uh, Perez got the measure of Leclerc. Verstappen was quite happy just to sit behind. Then Leclerc pitted during the first virtual safety car. Red Bull decided not to. And then in the end, on overall pace alone, Max got Perez and it was job done from there, of course, because Leclerc was never a threat in the end after his engine failure. We'll get to him shortly, of course. So, yeah, once he got past Perez, it was just nice and tidy. Coming over the team radio, and it was like, yeah, we'd like you to do 47.5s if possible, Max. Uh, I'm quite happy doing 47s as we are, thanks. Yeah, stick with 47 zeros then. He'd got it under control to the point where he was quick on pace. He was pulling away from his teammate, but not making mistakes and not going too fast enough to risk everything. They were telling him, like, on the last few laps when you come up to back markers, don't use DRS, just take it steady, take it easy. We don't need to put any external pressure on this car that isn't needed. And they did a fantastic job of managing Max, and Max did a fantastic job of managing the race as well. So, for Max Verstappen, it's going to be nine points on the Cruel Room, a great drive by him, and I'm knocking that point off for the qualifying, because when you're this high up the field, you should really be aiming for poles or front rows at the very minimum and to be out qualified by his teammate was a little bit disappointed with that and throughout the weekend as well up until race day Perez really did look like the lead Red Bull there but wasn't to be in the race and Max Verstappen takes the victory so yes nine points to Max Verstappen and then, as mentioned, it is, of course, Sergio Perez. And a great, solid weekend by Perez. I think this is going to be another confidence-boosting weekend by Perez because, as mentioned there, free practice, a one, two, three, and throughout qualifying, he looked to have the measure of max. At the start of the race, pulling ahead of Charles Leclerc was an absolutely fantastic effort, but I think he pushed too hard on those tyres a bit too soon, and Max gobbled him up after that virtual safety car period, what released Max away from Charles. So... Yeah, and then in the end, it was like a 20-second gap between the two of them, weren't it? But once they were in first and second place, that was it. That was it. You know, they didn't need to fight anymore. They were happy to take that. Uh, of course, Sergio Perez picks up the fastest lap points as well. Despite Max's efforts of trying it in the last couple of laps, he was 4,000th away from matching Perez's time and 5,000th away from beating it. So, yeah, a uh, really close call there. But Checo does pick up that point, which will help him in his championship campaign. 
So yeah, overall for Sergio Perez, it's going to be eight points. Eight points to him. I think he impressed me in the Friday and the Saturday with qualifying especially. And in the race, unfortunately, pushed too hard on those first stints of tyres, which let Max ahead of him. And then from there on, it was pretty much line of stern from Red Bull. And I know people are going to say, yeah, but with that no fighting radio message that came over to Perez, that was when the Ferraris were still in the race. Well, certainly Charles was anyway. Um... So yeah, it made sense at the time just to not fight Max. Max was coming through at a rate of knots anyway, and judging by the pace, Max would have won this time. So, you know, it was a different scenario to Spain, let's put it that way. So, all in all, a great race weekend by Red Bull. Checo Perez, second place, and a uh, fastest lap point. Eight points on the Cruel Room. And in third place, it's George, George, George on the Russell. Watch out for that top five. And he finishes in the top five again, this time picking up the final podium position. He picks up third place for the third time this year. What a stunning effort by George. He's doing such a great job, isn't he? I'm going to keep banging on about this. He, he is really my driver of the year so far. He has been incredible. Absolutely incredible. He's, mm, he's overcoming what the shitness is of that Mercedes car. I mean, we call it shit. It's still better than the majority of the field. But in comparison to what Mercedes have produced, he's still doing a stunning, stunning job in a difficult car that's bouncing around once again. That looked really difficult down the straight. And he picks up the podium positions and he just puts himself in a position where he's like, yeah, I'll drive here. I'm chilled out. It was in fifth quite happily. The Ferraris dropped out. It was quite it was quite happy in third then. You know, he was fast enough to not be under pressure from any other teams or drivers. And he could just drive his own race, drive his own pace and pick up a stunning result of P3 once again. My driver of the season... An absolutely phenomenal effort. Qualifying, race, not really doing anything wrong at all there. And he's going to be a full 10 points. A full 10 points to George Russell. I, I cannot blame that. There's not a single fault I can put on him. He's just driving impeccably well. And I'm going to be so gutted when inevitably during this long season something goes wrong. He's going to get his front wing clipped off. He's going to get a puncture, something like that. And I'm going to be so gutted for him because I really hope it doesn't stop this momentum. But at the moment, the momentum is unstoppable and it's a full 10 points on the cruel room to George Russell. In fourth place is, of course, Russell's teammate, Lewis Hamilton. And what can be said for Lewis? A little bit of a difficult qualifying there. Qualifying seventh in the end, wasn't it? In the race, he got a little bit lucky with uh, with uh, Sebastian Vettel sending it down the escape road, didn't he, while he was trying to overtake Alonso because uh, Hamilton got stuck behind him for quite a long, long time. Uh, but nonetheless, a great drive. Put some good overtakes in on the end there with Sonoda and Gasly, who elected to stay out and not pit under that second safety car, uh, virtual safety car period, I should say, sorry. Um, so he managed to hunt those down and overtake them relatively easily. Uh, but yeah, uh, Lewis Hamilton suffering a lot from the porpoising and bouncing. He was saying that his, his seat's gone cold, which could really mean like a numb bum, which over the bouncing and the porpoising... Certainly not what you want, so there could be a little bit of a back injury there for him. Hamilton as well, of course, was uh, struggling to get out of his seat, wasn't he, uh, at the end of the race. After complaining of a, of a cold seat, he then struggled to actually get out of the car. So, clearly a back issue there, and as a result of all that bouncing down the straight, we've also understood that uh, K-Mag has suffered some nerve damage in his back as well from the porpoising already this season. So... Something really does need to be addressed with that, really does, uh, particularly on the Mercedes car, but not overall, the, I think the FIA need to come up with something now uh, to implement a minimum ride height or something among the teams to prevent this uh, from getting severe to the point where it's going to be causing potential injury. And a uh, back is uh, uh, certainly not a good thing that you want to have injuries with. Uh, so fingers crossed we get that sorted out. And for Lewis Hamilton, it's going to be eight points on the crawl room to him. Well, what did he make points? I think that was a great drive. Uh, kept his head down. Uh, he had that little incident in qualifying, didn't he, where he pretty much came to a stop to try and get a toe off someone, which was a little bit naughty, but I'm going to let that slide. Uh, but overall, a great race, considering the uh, circumstances. Fought his way through traffic well. Got a little bit lucky with Seb's spin there uh, to be able to allow him through the Aston Martin cleanly and freely. Uh, but did some cracking overtakes and everyone else. So, yeah, cracking drive. Eight points to Lewis Hamilton. And in fifth place, it is Pierre Gasly. What a stunning effort. I am so happy to see the Alpha Tauris up here again. Alpha Tauri have been nowhere pretty much these last few races, just picking up the odd point here and there. 
Uh, I think the best result is of eighth at the minute by Sonoda, something like that. And here's Pierre Gasly taking ten points away in fifth place. And what a shame that Alpha Tauri did not pit him under that second virtual safety car period phase because Gasly could have been fourth. He could have been fourth. He should have been fourth, really. But nonetheless, that's not Gasly's fault at all. And his race just was really as a result of what he did in qualifying. So he kept himself clean and tidy in qualifying. He was in the top eight, wasn't he? Qualifying, nice to see. And then in the race, he just stayed there. The Ferraris dropped out. He stayed where he pretty much was. So a really good effort by Gasly. And nice to see Alpha Tauri up there again. And it's going to be a full 10 points to Pierre Gasly. Great qualifying. Great race. Didn't put a wheel wrong. Shame about the strategy going a little bit awry there from Alpha Tauri. But it's not his fault. They didn't tell him to box. So fantastic effort, Pierre. Great to see you back up here again. And some good points for Alpha Tauri. 10 points to you. Next up in P6, we come to Sebastian Vettel. A great effort, but it would have been so much more if he didn't spin me right round, baby. Right round, like a record, baby. Right round, round, round. Oh, Seb. You could have been P4 without that. You could have been P4. He was trying to overtake Alonso, who stayed out, wasn't it? Or was it Ocon? It was one of the pesky Alpines, anyway, that no one can seem to find a way round at the moment. Um, and he went round on the outside. It looked like it was job done, but then he just locked up after the second DRS zone, going through turn three, and he had to send it down the escape road, do a pirouette, come back out, and he lost out to Hamilton and Sonoda there. Then he struggled to get past Sonoda, and eventually he did, but then obviously by that point, uh, Hamilton was already well up the road and Gasly was already gone as well. So big, big shame by Vettel there. It could have been so much more, but still a P6 effort and we're disappointed with it. Well, I certainly am anyway. Uh, I think that's a great effort nonetheless, but I've got to knock him points off for that because it could have been fourth. It could have been 12 points instead of the 80 picked up and that could make all the difference to Aston Martin's Constructors' Championship hopes. Tying now with Haas. So... There you go, that's an interesting one for you, isn't it? So yeah, uh, tying with Haas now, and it could have been ahead of Haas had he not had that little pirouette. So, it's going to be 8.5 on the crawl room. I'm knocking in 1.5 off for the uh, pirouette there that inevitably cost him P4, definitely P5. It had definitely got Gasly with those ailing tyres at the end there, um, had he not had that spin. Potentially could have stayed ahead of Hamilton, so yeah. I'm knocking in 1.5 points off, and yeah, still a great drive. Don't want to take anything away from Seb for that, but he has to be penalised because that did cost him points overall. So yeah, it's 8.5 to Sebastian Vettel. Then in seventh place it is Fernando Alonso, and what could be said for Alonso's race? He drove really well again, uh, going to Q3 just, and qualified 10th, I believe it was, and then in the race it was just uh, pretty much as you were. He did a really, really good race in terms of holding everyone up, defending from everyone. He was certainly uh, making the Alpines as wider as it could be. He's doing a great job, actually, doing a really good job now, Alonso. He's been really unlucky in the first few races, hardly picking up any points, but these last couple couple of races the momentum's there now and he's picking up some solid points here he is finishing of course p7 so really really good effort and i'm awarding him nine points for that effort really nice to see really nice driving uh, held off the mclarens at the end there as well of ricardo and uh, lando norris so you know he finished out of his teammate out qualified his teammate as well that's always the most important thing when we're rating these drivers where they are in terms of the teammate and he drove a a pretty good race weekend overall in that respect. Drove really well in the race. Fair play. So it's going to be nine points to Alonso. And I am just going to mention that little cheeky thing he did in Q1 where he sent it down the slip road on purpose uh, so that other drivers couldn't improve their times and knock the Alpines out. A little bit cheeky there, Alonso. But, you know, rules are rules. He, he always complains about them, but then he does them himself. So there you go. I'm not knocking him any points off for that. That was naughty. But there we go. So, yeah, nine points to... Fernando Alonso. And then we come to Daniel Ricciardo. Stand by your man. Give him two arms to cling to. Well, you pretty much fed him to the fucking dogs there, didn't you, McLaren? No standing by your man there. What was that all about? He, couldn't, he wasn't allowed to overtake Norris in that first phase. And I feel sorry for Ricciardo there because that looks like the entire love in the McLaren camp has gone for Ricciardo there. What on earth was that all about in that first stint? He was clearly faster than Norris on harder tyres and 
Ric where could Ricardo have been? Had he not been bottled up behind his teammate, it was frustrating to watch. It really annoyed me that did. That was McLaren's own doing there. Had he been allowed to be get through Norris on that first one, and it wasn't a team order to not overtake, that's what they gave him. So it wasn't that Ricardo was trying and he didn't pull it off. They told him, no, stay behind Norris. Now, if he'd have been allowed past Norris, he could have well finished ahead of Alonso this race week, and I'm convinced of that. Uh, so, yeah, big, big shame, big, big disappointment there, but I don't blame Ricardo, and I think this is probably one of his best races this season. In fact, I think it, it is it is his best race this season. I'm going to go ahead and say that, because uh, the qualifying was decent. Uh, the, the McLaren car didn't look that great in terms of race pace, uh, or qualifying pace. Race pace, they knew they were going to struggle. It's one of the stro slowest in the straight lines. Um but he got stuck behind his teammate and they didn't tell him he could overtake and he obeyed the team order. I mean, I know the team order got returned by Norris not being allowed to overtake Ricardo at the end, but that was different then because that was for an overall position. But yeah, Ricardo, it was really frustrating to watch that uh, from McLaren. Uh, it did annoy me somewhat. Sometimes I'm not a fan of team orders. Rarely am I a fan of team orders. But when it makes sense for a team overall, that's when I'm in favour of them. And, uh, yeah, they should have let him through. So, Ricardo, I'm going to award him nine points. I think that were his best race this season. He showed really well. He was matching Norris all race. He, he, had, he had opportunities there to potentially finish ahead of Alonso, but the team denied it. So, big shame. And, uh, yeah, but I don't blame Ricardo for that. And let's not forget, Ricardo has had a difficult year, and that was his best race this year, and he got hindered by team orders. So, there you go. Nine points to Daniel Ricciardo. That was a great drive, and I'm sorry that McLaren clearly don't love you anymore to the point where they're happy to lose points to see you lose. It was it was ever so bizarre, that. Silly team orders. There we go, but nine points to Ricciardo. And then we come to Lando Norris. The McLarens come in two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. And yes, Lando Norris. Uh, good drive. Great, great qualifying. Uh, great race initially. The team orders weren't his fault. Uh, but the moaning on the radio towards the end there when he, they said, look, hold position. Uh, Ricardo, now he's going to stay ahead of you for the end of the race. Because they were on about the, there was a little talk there, weren't there, towards the end that uh, Norris was going to be allowed through on Ricardo if Ricardo couldn't get past Alonso. But then the gap just got too big between them all and they just decided to hold position. He got a bit whingy, didn't he? And he's like, oh, guys, but this is for track position and this is for points. And. Well, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? You're not in fight for a championship. Ricardo's done a better job and got ahead of you. It'd have been ahead of you anyway if it not been for the team orders at the start of the race. So just put up with it. You know, you know, it's okay to get beaten by your teammates sometimes, Lando. So annoyed me a little bit, that did. Annoyed me a little bit. But up to that point, it was a good race. But I'm knocking a point off for that. Uh, so I was going to award him eight. And he's going to get seven. He's going to get seven. I'm knocking a point off for the moaning. Uh, not necessary. You're fighting for eighth and ninth or whatever it was. It wasn't anything special. You know, if it was for a podium, I'd get it. But it wasn't. And it doesn't matter. And you just have to have a good result for the team at the end of the day when you're that far down the order. So, yeah. Uh, frustrated me a little bit, Lando. And it's rarely he, he annoys me. But he has this time around. So, yeah. Seven points to Lando Norris. And rounding out the top ten, we have Alonso's teammate, Esteban Ocon. Finishing tenth, a, a different strategy. He went the way of Ricardo by starting on the hard tyres. Elected not to pit during the first VSC. Uh, did the pit under the second VSC? I believe they did. And then he had to clamber his way back through the field again and ended up tenth and stayed there. Uh, quite a big gap in the end to the McLarens and where the Alpine finished of Ocon. So... Yeah, overall, out-qualified by his teammate, knocked out in Q2, out-raced by his teammate throughout the most of it. Uh, strategy could have played a part in that, I have no doubt, but he rolled the dice, he took the risk, the team took the risk, it didn't pay off, but it wasn't one of Ocon's best races we've seen this year. We've seen some really great drives from him this year. This one wasn't one of them, so it's the middle of the road, five to Ocon. Uh, might be a little bit of hash by a point there, but I'm sticking with it, and it's five points to Ocon. Alonso's up there ahead of the two McLarens, you're behind them. At least it's a point for the team, but I think it could have been more and should have been more, really. So there we go. Five points to Esteban Ocon. And then we come to Valtteri Bottas, and he's in 11th and not scoring points, and what a difficult weekend. For Valtteri Bottas, uh, he was... It was P nowhere, was it, in qualifying? He only just scraped through into Q2, and then that Q2 effort was 15th. So, not great. Out-qualified by his teammate Joe, and out-raced by him as well. So, 
not a great weekend at all. It was a weekend to forget by Alfa Alfa Romeo entirely, but certainly for Valtteri Bottas as well, not to pick up any points. Uh, clearly, I don't know if there's something wrong with the car or not, but Joe seemed to have pace and Bottas didn't. So big, big shame. And uh, it's going to be four points on the crawl room to Valtteri Bottas. A lonely race, one to forget. I was really wishing he could score a point and scrape a point, but it was about eight seconds behind Ocon in the end and wasn't going to happen. But there you go. That's it. A run of points comes to an end. He's had a great run of it so far. But a disapp- disappointing weekend by Alfa Romeo uh, with the new livery. Maybe they should go back to the old one, take the uh, green off and uh, go back to how they work. Cause certainly didn't bring him any luck this weekend. Four points to Valtteri Bottas. And then we come to Alex Albon, an encouraging P12, but when you think of how many retirements there were, and they were all ahead of him, really, weren't they? Um, It's not been a great one again, has it? But not bad. Not bad. It's been better than the other two. Uh, This one, I think the circuit's just a difficult one for Williams to manage. Uh, The straight line speed, it's not got any of that, has it? Uh, Not got much downforce. It doesn't need much downforce. But, you know, I think it's just a tricky car to handle around this kind of circuit. Uh, For Albon, where did he qualify? He was 17th, was he? He he got caught up by the Alonso antics in qualifying there, sending it down the slip road. So, I don't think he'd have had a chance for Q2, but he could have maybe improved his position by one and maybe got 16th. Uh, then in the race, it was all looking like he was down there, 17th, 18th throughout most of it. The retirement started to come, and he's finished ahead of a handful of cars, so he's not done a bad race there because he kept himself out of trouble. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, to be honest, he was beating Mick, but everyone was beating Mick this time, weren't they? So yeah, for Alex Albon, it was a bit of a difficult one to judge by him. It was a good, solid race, but nothing special. So it's going to be six points on the board to Alexander Albon. Uh, P12 looks great on paper, but how he got there, it wasn't that marvellous when you think of the cars that pulled out. But, like I said, finished out of a handful of cars, kept himself out of the wall, except in that free practice session where he was changing a dial and smacked into the wall. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? So there we go, I'm afraid. Six points to Alex Albon. Um, overall, an OK weekend. Better than the previous two, anyway. And then we come to Yuki Tsunoda. Oh, what a shame for Yuki. What a shame for Yuki Tsunoda. I am gutted for him. He was on for some good points there, and it all came undone when his rear, <laughs> rear DRS went, this side's open. We're not bothering with this side. It had split down the middle. Such a bizarre failure there. Got a black and orange flag, which pretty much meant he should have retired it. But the Alpha Tauri team was like, no, whack some gaffer tape on that. <laughs> Whacking gaffer tape on it and sent it out. And the FIA marshals are there like, you know, we missed that by five seconds. What have you done to it? Um, I don't know if he's going to end up getting disqualified for probably an illegal rear wing at the end or Christ knows what. But uh, either way, he's out of the points. I'm judging him as where he finished in the race. If there's any further detrimental to his race, it doesn't matter. Um but yeah, what a shame. It was running well, wasn't it? It was running really well. Uh, I think he deserved more than what this race... Pro- uh, he should have been seventh, I think, realistically. He should have been seventh. Uh, unfortunate that Alpha Tauri made that mistake of not pitting the, 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 either car there because it was a sitting duck for uh, Hamilton, which was needless. You should have just put him in behind Hamilton and he would have stayed behind Hamilton, but he would still been there in solid points. And like I said, the, the big DRS failure was the, was the big issue there. Um, and sent him out of the point. So it's going to be eight points to Yuki Tsunoda. That's the best race we've seen from Alpha Tauri this weekend for a long time, and also a really good race by Yuki Tsunoda as well. Uh, I think he deserves eight. Definitely deserves eight. He didn't do as good a job as his uh, teammate in qualifying all the race, so knock him a couple of points off for that, but he should have been seventh. So there we go. That's one of those things, unfortunately, that's racing, and when Yuki's always on for a good result, something goes wrong, and... This happened again to him, didn't he? So, the talking that he's going to be extending his contract into next year, which would be nice to see. Uh, but yeah, there we go. For now, it's just eight points to Yuki Sonoda. Then we come to the first of the Haas, which is, of course, Mick Schumacher. <laughs> it's Nicholas Latifi, the new me. Nope, only I can be alert on a street circuit. Uh... Well, what can I say? What can I say? I just there's just nowhere, is it? He's just nowhere, is Mick. The first time in his career he lined up twentieth. Now, if that had happened last year, I'd have more than understood it. That car didn't look great in qualifying. Admittedly, K Mag was sixteenth and knocked out in Q one as well. But 
He should not have been 20th. He should not have been behind Stroll, who stuffed it in the wall. He shouldn't have been behind the two Williams. And then in the race, what was he behind? Stroll and the Williams. It was... Oh, dear me. I don't know what to do with Mick now, because that's his fourth Palmer. And, like, pretty much all in a row as well, aren't they? So... I don't know what to do with Mick. Do I keep giving him the time of day and just keep awarding him Palmer's or what? Because, like, the car was looking like it could have been points worthy again with Kevin Magnussen this weekend. We'll come to his race in a minute. But it looked like it could have been on the fringes of top ten in the race. Mick was nowhere at any point. He had nothing go wrong in that race and he was just nowhere all the time. So... Yeah, uh, another frustrating weekend uh, for Mick Schumacher. Another frustrating race for everyone trying to watch him and cheer him on. Uh, yeah, difficult. Really, really difficult. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's Palmer of the Week to Mick Schumacher. Next up is the second of the Williams. It is Nicholas Latifi, of course. And everyone's going to be expecting a big Palmer to fly across the screen there. But no, it doesn't. There's no Palmer of the Week to Nicholas Latifi because, let's be honest, does he deserve to be on this F1 grid? No. But, in comparison to what others have done this weekend, does he deserve to be on the F1 grid? Yeah. You know, Mick Schumacher, in a lot better car, finishes one position ahead of him and gets out-qualified by Nicholas Latifi. Lance Stroll in a much better car. It, you know, there's, there's a drivers there on this grid at the moment that are getting outdriven by Nicholas Latifi. So you can't give Latifi a Palmer because Latifi's just doing Latifi things, which is just average, 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 finish the race. When he does badly and crashes, then he gets a Palmer. But this way, this time around, it was nothing really wrong. I just, I, do you know what? Genuinely, my heart sank when he got that 10 second stop go penalty because that was ridiculous. Once again, the mechanics, we saw this on Sergei Sorokin a few years back, didn't we, at Monaco, not putting the wheels on in time, so he got a stop go penalty. And here, the marshal, uh, the, the mechanic just pushing him back. And it's like less than 10 seconds to go before formation lap. Get off the fucking car. Touch the car, was, it wasn't at the side of the car. And yeah, big, big shame for Nicholas Latifi. That costs him like 30 seconds then, because it's 20 seconds to drive through pit lane, 10 seconds for your stop go. That's his race over with. So people are saying, yeah, he's dog shitting at the back. 30 seconds were lost straight away there. And there were no safety car this weekend to bunch him back up. Not saying he would have done anything with the safety car. I'm just merely pointing out that at no point could he make up that deficit. So, yeah. Look at us, Latifi. It's nothing special. It's three points. I'm not singing his praises. I'm not saying he's brilliant. I'm not saying he's the world's greatest driver. But at the minute... He's looking like one of the better ones. He's looking like the 18th best driver as opposed to the last best driver. You know, it's, it's difficult. Very, very difficult. So, yeah, Latifi, I'm not singing his praises at all. He doesn't deserve that seat. But in comparison to all the drivers that we have on the grid, he more than deserves it. So, yeah, three points to Nicholas Latifi. A Latifi kind of race. Then we come to the first of the retirements on this list, and it is, of course, Lance Stroll. My wife was having a baby, but by the time I got her to the hospital, 16 babies had been born ahead of me. Uh. Had to be. It had to be. It had to be. A Palmer of the Week to Lance Stroll. What an absolute knob. Qualifying sticks in the wall. Okay, I'll let him have one mistake. Doesn't look to have done much damage. I think I've damaged the wing, but I'll, I'll carry on anyway. Brilliant, no worries, because why, what are you going to do, set a really good lap? No, I'm going to do a better job and stuff it in the wall and do two corners and the front wing that I didn't do last time. <laughs> hey! Fantastic stuff. What a knob. So qualifying alone, it was already on for a Palmer. And I was like, there was no way he can recover this unless he finishes like inside the top five. And then in the race, what does he do? He's just shite and at the back. Shite and at the back, racing around with Mick and Latifi. And you're like, wow, whoa, wow, whoa, wow, wow. That is not where the Aston Martin should have been this weekend. When I'm annoyed that Sebastian Vettel finished sixth and he should have been fourth, definitely fifth. So there's there's Vettel, Q3, stunning effort, handful of points, fantastic stuff. Here's, here's Lance Stroll eventually retiring. I think that's just to hide his embarrassment from the fact that when Vettel gets in the pits, like, oh, where did you finish? Oh, I retired, but I would have been really well. If it had seen on the scoreboard that it had been 15th, you know, what a knob. What an absolute knob. So, yeah, Lance Stroll living up to his knobbish expectations. Been in it in qualifying twice in the space of, like, half a dozen corners. And then in the race, P nowhere, P nowhere, P nowhere, P nowhere. We need to retire the car. 
Job to go done. There we go. So that is Lance Stroll's race over and done with. Palmer of the week to him because it was shit. Then we come to Kevin Magnussen, of course, and what a shame for K-Mag. It didn't look like the car was really good over one lap in the Haas, did it? Out in Q1, unfortunately caught out by Alonso going down the escape road as well. He was one of the victims there. Uh, and in the race, it was looking okay, wasn't it? It was looking like he was going to be on the cusp of points between the 10th and 12th range. It'd be nice to see him get that 10th position where he was when the car expired. An engine failure, not the first one this weekend, of course, as well. Uh, so, yeah, K-Mag, middle of the road, five points. And I'd just like to point out, that was a bit silly, that, wasn't it? There's an escape road there for him to go down. He pulls up, like, oh, yeah, just reverse it back. They've parked a chuffing car there and someone's clearly lost the keys because they didn't shift it. <laughs> like, what's all that about? So, yeah, they ended up just pushing into the corner as best they could. And what, an, what a fucking ridiculous thing to do. I'll just, I'll just, you know these little shoots here where we park cars? Yeah, well, we normally park them after the retired race. We don't park a fucking Jeep there ready for end at race where all the marshals can just jump in and piss off home. So, yeah, there we go. One of those things. Um... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kevin Magnussen, middle of the road five. I was disappointed to see him retire there so quickly, so instantly. He was on the back of Sonoda, wasn't he, at that point as well, trying to hunt him down. And the radio message came, hunt him down, come on, we need to get past him, it's critical we get past him. And then he blew up. So there we go. Middle of the road five to Kevin Magnussen. And then we come to Zhou Guan Yu. Oh, I'm so disappointed for him. So disappointed. He was having a great race qualifying one was stunning he was he had like the fifth fastest lap at the end didn't he q2 i'm not quite sure what went wrong there but he only ended up 14th but it, he out qualified his teammate and then in the race he was running 10th he was running 10th and then he had to ease off the power and so said i'm sorry i've got a technical issue and he was like on the radio again again guys and yeah again i'm afraid joe and what a shame. I'm gutted for him. So, I am that gutted for him. I'm breaking my own rules. Normally, the retirements can only score a maximum of five points, as uh, as you all may be aware. Um, but this time, I'm breaking my own rules, and he's getting seven. He's getting seven because he deserved those points because he's not he's not shown up to the last few weekends at all. He's been pee nowhere. Even when he breaks down, he's been pee nowhere. But this race, he was out racing his teammate out-qualified his teammate. He had genuine pace here to, to score points. He was running 10th. He, he had genuine pace. And it was disappointing to see him lose out there in in that way as well. Because, you know, Sonoda dropping out towards the latter stages, even if we were 11th, it had gained the point. He was ahead of Bottas the entirety of that race. So Bottas finished 11th. Joe would have at least been 10th. You know, it was so disappointing. Uh, so, yeah, seven points to Zhou Guan Yu. Um... That was uh, that was one of the best the best races he's had since the first race in Bahrain. So, yeah, there we go. Big disappointment, big shame. I'm breaking my own rules just to give him a couple of extra points because he really does deserve them. Seven points to Joe Guan Yu. And then we come to the pairing of Ferrari. And uh, before we get into these two drivers, there's just one of these. <laughs> Sha la la only went off because he slipped on Lewis Hamilton's tears. Uh. For the Ferrari camp. There you go. You can have a Palmer of the Week Ferrari because that was diabolical, wasn't it? Absolute shower of shite, right shit show that was. You can always snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, Ferrari. And like, oh, we've had it a bit easy these last few races, haven't we? We've had a couple of Red Bulls breaking down here and there. Big championship lead in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. Oh, it's so difficult, though, to hang on to these things, isn't it? What should we do? Engine failure, hydraulics failure, whatever. Just sling it all about the place. So let's just, let's just throw it all away. They're only something like 30 points ahead of Mercedes now in the Constructors. That's how wrong it's gone from them. They've gone from leading everyone by 40 odd points to suddenly Mercedes chomping at the bit of them in the constructors. Ridiculous stuff. Ridiculous stuff. Leclerc's down to third in the Drivers' Championship now. Is Sainz still fifth? I think George has still got to be ahead of him, hasn't he? So yeah, it's just all a bit of a piss tech, isn't it? So yeah, Ferrari, I mean, I'm just going to do the drivers here now. So um, Leclerc gets middle of the row five for his DNF, uh, you know, he was driving really well. What do you got the win? I'm not sure how that strategy would have played out. Maybe that second virtual safety car period would have played into their hands. Maybe not. Who knows? 
Uh, we're never going to know, are we? And he was hunting down the Red Bulls as he blew up. So, yeah, middle of the road, five to Leclerc. Stunning pole lap. Uh, I mean, he was five tenths ahead, wasn't he? And then the other cars came in, but couldn't get within three tenths. And then, yeah, and then Sainz. Difficult qualifying again. Difficult race. Was a lonely P4 when he expired early on. Uh, so he's getting four points. So there we go. Five points to Leclerc. Four points to Carlos Sainz. Maximum will give a retirement except for Joe, because I do like him. Uh, yeah, Maximum will give his five, so there you go. That's the best I can do. And a Palmer of the Week to Ferrari. I think that's the only way I can uh, conclude the video, I think. <laughs> So there we have it guys, those were the runners and riders of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below. Did I score any drivers too high, any too low? The scoreboard for the Crawl Room Series is on the screen now. Take a look, have a look, have a look and see what you think. Who's the risers, who's the fallers? Do you agree with the positions there? In Let me know in the comments section below of course. A big thanks to Dan Mushy Gaming for providing me with this Cruel Room Championship scoreboard. Without him this series will be more pointless than it already is. And of course who can forget Dave F1 Games PlayStation for the fantastic Jolie and Palmer skits that you all know and love by now. So, I'll see you all next week for the Canadian Grand Prix. Looking forward to it. First time back in Canada for a couple of years' time. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all then. And much love.